You are standing in a dense tropical forest. It's humid. The air is thick and the ground feels alive beneath your feet. There is an eerie silence that makes your skin crawl. What was that? A deafening roar so powerful it just shook the earth itself. Every instinct in your body goes into overdrive and you are overcome with fear. You're not dreaming and you are not safe. Welcome to 65 million years ago, the late Cretaceous period. Welcome to the age of the dinosaurs. Today we're going to answer the question, what would actually happen if you were sent back in time 65 million years ago? Would you survive? Would you even last a day? Things don't look good for you. I bet you cannot guess what would be your biggest threat. And trust me, it's not what you think. Stick around because this is going to be interesting. So, what are your chances of survival? The short answer, not good. The late Cretaceous period wasn't exactly designed for humans. The atmosphere back then had more oxygen than what it does today. Now, this extra oxygen allowed the animals to get ginormous. The oxygen-rich environment also made fires even more dangerous. So that campfire that you were planning, forget it. One spark and you'd have a forest fire the size of Texas. Now, the fun part. Let's talk dinosaurs. Despite what Jurassic Park might have taught you, you wouldn't just run into a T-Rex every five minutes. Paleontologists estimate that they were between 20 and 30,000 T-Rexes roaming the Earth 65 million years ago. And they were spread out across different regions, so you would need to be incredibly lucky or unlucky to actually meet a T-Rex. You are more likely to be eaten by something smaller like a raptor. These cunning predators hunted in packs. They could run at speeds up to 40 miles an hour and use their razor-sharp claws to slice through prey. Or there is Majungasaurus, a fearsome 20 foot long apex predator. Majungasaurus had a powerful bite and terrifying teeth designed to crush bone. Even worse, fossil evidence suggests it might have been a cannibal, meaning nothing, including its own kind, was safe for Majungasaurus. Or maybe you would run into a Carnotaurus one of the strangest and most terrifying predators of the late Cretaceous. At around 25 feet long, this predator was built for speed, with powerful legs that could chase down prey in open landscapes. Its distinctive horns gave it a devilish appearance, and its muscular jaws could crush bones. Carnotaurus didn't just hunt. It overpowered and demolished anything it set its sights on. On land, predators came in all shapes and sizes, and you'd be lucky to last a day. Even the little dinosaurs would be enough to hassle you by biting your leg, which could lead to an infection. More on that in a moment. If the dinosaurs don't get you, the prehistoric predators of the skies might. Imagine you're walking through the forest, and you see the shadow of a Ketsu Coatus, the largest pterosaur ever known, passing overhead. With a wingspan of up to 36 feet, this flying nightmare wasn't interested in bugs. It could snatch you up in its beak faster than you could say, hey look, a giant flying chicken. And let's not forget the oceans. Taking a swim might sound refreshing, but the waters were ruled by monsters like Mosasaurus, a marine reptile over 50 feet long with a bite force that could crush you in seconds. Another terrifying predator was Chronosaurus, with a stocky build and a massive skull full of sharp, conical teeth. At around 30 feet long, it specialised in ambushing prey and could easily tear through sea turtles or other marine reptiles. If that's not scary enough, imagine swimming alongside a Z Factinus, a 20-foot-long fish with a nightmarish grin and razor-sharp teeth, known for swallowing prey whole. Maybe even scarier than all of that, though, there was a Dacosaurus. This was a crocodile-like marine predator nicknamed the T-Rex of the sea. Dacosaurus 
was more than happy to make a snack out of you. Safe to say the Cretaceous Oceans were the last place you'd want to take a dip. On land, in the air, or in the water, the Lake Cretaceous was full of terrifying creatures that would look at you the same way that you look at that delicious cheeseburger. So, basically, don't go in the water, don't go on land, and always look up. Good luck. Now, let's assume by some absolute miracle that you are able to avoid the predators. Congratulations! But you're still in trouble. Despite the ridiculous predators roaming around you, your biggest threat as a modern human is actually disease and bacteria. Now, do you remember that little dinosaur that bit your leg earlier? Well, that might actually be what kills you. The microorganisms in the late Cretaceous would be completely alien to your immune system. A simple scratch could lead to an infection that you would have no chance of fighting off. And to make matters worse, our old friend, the extra oxygen in the atmosphere, would once again make matters worse, as the bacteria would thrive under those conditions. Forget dinosaurs, germs could take you out first. Okay, now let's assume that you are able to avoid T-Rexes, fight off raptors somehow, avoid pterosaurs, stay away from the water, and we're able to do all of this without getting so much as a scratch. There is still the issue of food and water. You need to eat and you need to drink. Temperatures were hotter back then and the earth was more humid, meaning you would dehydrate faster. Food and water would be difficult to come by. You can't exactly pop down to your local Tesco. Most of the plants you see are completely foreign and perhaps even toxic to humans. Even if you do manage to find water, it's likely filled with bacteria and pesticides that your body is not equipped to handle. Not to mention the crocodiles. Sure, you could try hunting, but let's be honest, you're not just going to kill a dinosaur with a stick that you just happen to find lying around now, are you? Even if you did have a gun, I mean, you have a time machine, so in this hypothetical scenario, it's not beyond the realms of possibility that you would also have a gun. You would eventually run out of bullets, though. And the gun could also get wet or jam, so eventually you would have to resort to good old-fashioned methods anyway. Good luck with that. You are a tiny, hairless monkey in a world of giant arcosaurs. So, let's say that you have the survival skills of Rambo, the throwing accuracy of the Night King, and the immune system of Bonnie Blue. You would eventually notice something strange as you look around for pterosaurs. The sky... The sun and the moon wouldn't quite look the same. The moon was closer to Earth back then and would be brighter as a result. The moon being closer also meant that tides and the wind would be more extreme. The Earth was also spinning faster, meaning days lasted about 23 hours. Even time itself is out to mess with you. Now, the big finale, the asteroid. Okay, so far, you've survived dinosaurs, bacterial infection, crazy winds, mastered hunting, and somehow found a clean water source. But now it's time for your biggest test to date. If you were dropped off close to the end of the Cretaceous, you'd get to witness one of the most catastrophic events in Earth's history. The chick Solub asteroid impact that wipes out 75% of life on the planet. The Chicxulub asteroid, which was roughly the size of Mount Everest, slammed into what is now the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, causing shockwaves, tsunamis, and a heat wave so intense it cooked animals alive hundreds of miles away. If you were far enough away not to be vaporized upon impact, you'd face a post-apocalyptic Earth filled with darkness, freezing temperatures, acid rain, toxic air, and a collapsing food chain. But look on the bright side, no more T-Rexes. So what's the takeaway? If you're sent back 65 million years, you're not just battling dinosaurs, you're up against an entire planet that wasn't designed for you. But hey, at least you'd have a great story. Sadly, no one would be around to hear it for another 65 million years. Thank you for watching today's video. If you've enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe and let me know in the comments which dinosaur would you want to see up close. Thank you and have a great day.